If you're thinking of starting a career in human resources, you come to the right place. This series on exploring careers in human resources breaks down the major specialties within the HR field in just a few short videos. It will help you get a good understanding of what each specialty is about, skills and experience needed, education, and some salary ranges for entry-level positions within the field. I will also give a little bit about my personal experience working in each specialty. So be sure you're also checking out my other videos in this series on recruiting, HR assisting, compensation, and others. Today, we're talking all about benefits. So if employee benefits seems easy to you and straightforward, you may want to reconsider. Definitely not reconsider a career in benefits, but rethink the notion that it's going to be easy. Before we dive into this video, my name is Raquel and I've been working in the HR field for over 10 years. And this channel is all about giving career advice and HR tips so that you can navigate the professional world and really make an impact. I make weekly videos on these topics, so if you're interested in learning more about HR, job search tips, and just general career advice, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. So what is it like working in benefits at a company? So benefit specialists and later on benefit managers are trained professionals that actually plan, create, manage benefit offerings for employees of a company. They manage relationships with vendors, insurance brokers, and investment managers if the company has a 401k program. Depending on how small or large the company is, the benefits and compensation department might be combined. You will see these positions combined at many companies, but for the purposes of this video, we'll be focusing just on benefits. The benefits department coordinates a lot with many other corporate departments like finance, payroll, and the executives at the company. They do this especially gearing up to open enrollment. So if you don't know what open enrollment is, it is actually the time of the year when all employees have to re-enroll in benefits. And they actually have the opportunity to make changes to their benefit selections. Benefit roles are also very analytical and research heavy, believe it or not. So benefit packages must be in compliance with federal and state laws. And with the introduction of the Affordable Care Act, there's also a lot to analyze. So employees hours need to be analyzed to ensure that employees who are enrolled in benefits are actually eligible and remain eligible. Many companies are now outsourcing this task, but there's still a need for internal tracking and report management. With that said, having advanced skills in Microsoft Excel and other spreadsheet software is key for benefit positions. So knowing how to analyze data in Excel and manipulate data for executive reporting involves completing VLOOKUPs, pivot table, and other advanced formulas in Excel. With that said, let's talk about other skills that are needed to be successful in a career in employee benefits. So number one, you need to be detail-oriented. Benefits requires a lot of research and data interpretation. You'll have to mix and match benefit packages to determine what meets your organization goals. Knowing details about each package is key. So let's just say your company offers three medical plans. Your employees are actually expecting you to know how much each copay is, how much the out-of-pocket max, deductibles, and so forth. The second skill that you need is great communication skills. Like I said, you'll be talking and meeting with so many people from vendors to executives to employees and knowing how to communicate with each of these stakeholders is key in running a successful benefits program, especially knowing how to communicate changes and benefits to employees. If you've ever been involved in a communication to employees, you will know that if you don't get this correct and if it's not deliver correct, this can have a very big impact on employee morale. So you also need to be good with numbers if you're going to work in benefits. So even at small companies, you'll be working with big numbers, big data, and your numbers have to be correct. 
you may have to pull a report on how much the company has spent on benefits over the last year or over the last month, or you may have to average hours for 500 plus employees over the last year. Knowing the resources that you need to complete these calculations to the penny, to the digit is key because your stakeholders are looking to you to get the numbers correct. Another very important skill that you must have if you're going to work in benefits is the ability to keep things confidential. If you know that you're a person that has to share everything or share something with someone, this is not the job for you. So individual employee benefit choices must be kept confidential at all times. And you really can get yourself and the company in some deep water if you're sharing information inappropriately. So really having a high degree of good ethics is key. So what about pay? How much can you expect to make in the benefits field? Benefits specialists can expect to make an average of 67000 and as a benefits manager, up to 130000 a year. But of course, that depends on your work experience, the company size, the industry, because some industries pay more than others, and actually the location. So my first experience in employee benefits was actually when I was an HR assistant. So in that role, part of my job was to actually explain benefit packages to the employees and sign new employees up after they've worked with the company for about 30 days. So I had to know the three benefit packages that the company offer, the dental package, the vision package, all about their voluntary benefits like life insurance, disability, and all of that so that I can be able to explain to the employees um, so that they can make some good decisions on their benefits. Now, this was before the Affordable Care Act. So back then, benefits was a lot more simpler than they are now, um, but it was a great start in learning and understanding how detailed a benefit specialist needs to be and how friendly they need to be and how um, open they need to be because employees need to feel comfortable when they're coming to their benefits person to go over really personal things about their situation. They might explain to you that they have five kids or they have a husband but they don't want their husband on and they need to feel um, a bit comfortable coming to whoever that HR assistant or that benefits coordinator is um, to know that their information is actually kept confidential. So after ACA hit um, the Affordable Care Act, I did not work in any roles that really focused in benefits. Um, then I actually got my third experience with benefits after a couple of years. I was actually working for a small organization that was self-insured and they were understanding their retirement plan options and things like that. That was my actual experience after the Affordable Care Act and I really started to see that benefits really has gotten complicated over the years, especially with having to measure the employee hours and things like that and more regulations every each and every year. There are more regulations around benefits that someone working in benefits has to know because there are a lot of fines behind not doing things correctly. So I hope this short summary on careers and benefits was helpful to you. If it was, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel below. That way you don't miss any of my videos going forward. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.